Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 262. I'm your host, Chris Britton. So, let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So make sure and check them out at CoolStuffInc.com, where you can still use code Dial5 at checkout to get 5% off of your order. Joining me in the literal studio, right next to me, uh, this is only the second time that we've done this, this is my sexy ranch hand co host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. What's up, Chris? Let's get rowdy indeed. Now, normally we like to start us off with what made us happy. And we decided that there's just too much stuff uh, this week. We went to Origins, and the number one thing that Calder and I decided what makes us happy was the interactions that we had with you guys in our community uh, it was unbelievable. It was yeah. fantastic. It was humbling, and I, it was something I'm never going to forget. But we're going to get into that in the next episode. Skip that in what made us happy this episode. Now, part two of this episode is actually going to come out tomorrow. So uh, tonight what we're just going to plan on doing is run through, since this game is all about the new hotness, run through WizKids Fan Appreciation all of the news that we got uh, at the fan appreciation from WizKids directly uh, run through kind of our experiences, asking questions, and things like that. So, Calder, are you ready to go? Yeah, man, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. WizKids was strong this year. They were just coming and swinging. So, like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. It was like five times more news this year than it was last year. It was that, crazy. That's exactly why we have to break yeah. this into two parts for sure. We are going to kind of just go through the slides individually of what WizKids showed. And we're going to try to give our commentary since we were right there. Uh, answer, And we were asking questions. We were listening to the, listener, to the other uh, participants ask questions. And we saw some stuff popping up online. Because you're not getting as much information from just the pictures as what we ended up getting from being right. there. So we'll start off. We're just going to go through um, what we got from the Regenesis, which is going to be the next uh, set that comes out. And that's the X-Men Regenesis. We did get uh, a couple uh, – a spoiled dial – from that now we got more than one but the other one or ones i can't remember how many they showed we kind of already We've knew seen about it before yeah, yeah so we're not yeah. going to go through that but what we what we are going to go through is warbird which actually was a a pretty decent dial um do you want to talk about that or do you want to talk about some of the other stuff later in the episode you're more excited about warbird than i am okay so you do it, yeah. sure okay coming in at what we think is 90 points because i didn't zoom in this is my fault i didn't zoom yeah. <laughs> like so this year it wasn't on a projector in a really dark room like last year for terrible pictures it was actually on a tv in like a normal lit room with a couple of windows so like that kind of made photos kind of better kind of worse in the whole grand scheme of things the way the room was laid out and everything we tried to get as close as we could and that wasn't as close as some other people because they took the spots on the stairs. Yeah, I don't know. It was confusing. We got there a little late. Yeah, so it's okay. whatever. But yeah. this is <laughs> this is what we got going for us. So Warbird is another one of the well every finger every figure in the Regenesis set. Uh, if you play it on like a different theme team, it'll right. it'll have the black border at the top of the card. Uh, if you play it on a very specific theme team, it's going to be on whatever that specific theme team it's either utopia for cyclops side or it's going to be gene gray school of higher learning if you're on wolverine's side warbird is going to be on wolverine's side and her keywords are uh, as mentioned gene gray school for higher learning she are x-men cosmic and warrior keywords she is uh either 90 or 80 we couldn't really see and or 50 so she has two different point options um the I stand with Wolverine trait is the same. So if you play her with that one, she just switches over to the gold titled card. 
Um, and what that is going to do for her is her second trait, Deathbringer class, I know how to kill. If you just play her on a non Jean Grey school, this is what it says. Free, choose one, flurry, or exploit weakness. Warbird can use the chosen power this turn. Now, if you just flop her over to the Jean Grey school for higher learning keyword theme team, it just says flurry. When Warbird uses it, she deals penetrating damage. So you don't really have to make that choice. Um, top dial, it, she's actually pretty freaking good. She's 10 speed with charge. She has flight. Uh, she doesn't have any other... Uh, special combat symbols, but she does have a special defensive power that is called Kid Gladiator's Personal Bodyguard, which gives her combat reflexes and vulnerability and willpower. So, yeah, it's 11 attack with blades, exploit. Uh, it's a little good. It's yeah. A little good sealed. She's she's pretty freaking good for this. So that's, that's that figure. We'll move on. So we got to see a lot of stuff from the X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga, which is coming out in September 2019 for those not paying attention we already saw a cyclops colossal sentinel we got a better picture and a screen grab from the cartoon so it's a dream sequence which is really interesting uh for this new cyclops sentinel so that's really cool um and we got four figures previewed for this set uh besides that we also got a what's his name again that's Nemesis? that's onslaught onslaught i've never read a lot of x-men uh the only onslaught i remember is when he morphs with uh like red skull or something okay yeah but that looks really awesome. So we got Onslaught, we got the Iceman Mech, and when asked about Apocalypse, uh, Scott shrugged. So it's a maybe. Yeah, we don't Apocalypse. We don't really know for sure on that, but it seemed likely just based off of body language. Right. So I'm thinking that they're maybe kind of holding that one back. And uh, when asked about uh, will any of them be colossal retaliators, he said, "I mean, you know, it's a it's a good mechanic. Yeah. So he, they'll probably." <laughs> There'll probably be a few colossal retail we're, figures in there. We're thinking that that mechanic's not going away anytime soon. No. Um, we did get. Uh, we got the very first. Uh, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one Wolverine figure spoiled from the set. It's actually pretty freaking good, Calder. You want this one? Yeah. For 50 points, uh, he has Indom, zero range, the X Men team ability. He is only five clicks long, but that's okay. Listen up. Because. Let me tell you something. The nose knows, bub. This is his first trait. Opposing characters within three squares can't use stealth or shape change, which is awesome. He is Alpha Flight, Weapon X, X-Men, and Martial Artist keywords. His dial, he has a 9 speed with charge, 12 attack, blades, claws, fangs, 18 defense, toughness, and 2 damage. His whole dial, that's his starting click. He gets some sidestep. He always has blades. He gets some uh, super senses and regen that kind of go off and on. But for 50 points, it's a really solid Wolverine, and I just like how slick and sleek the sculpts look. For 50 points, he's 50 actually points. Yeah. fantastic. 12 attack, top dial for charge. Oh, I love it so much. So he's going to be an awesome like little common to pull, for sure, in any sealed or battle royales and stuff. So that Wolverine is just dope. Uh, the next figure that we got, and I did actually raise my hand and ask a specific question about this one. Uh, that's Sabretooth, and it is Sabretooth 23A. So I don't know what uh, that is going to be um, for the B. I really don't have an idea on what that could be, but we will go through this. Uh, we have the Brotherhood of Mutants keyword, Weapon X. Uh, looks like animal, animal, assassin, brute, and monster, monster as the keywords. We do have some improved movement that is going to be ignores elevated and ignores hindering terrain. Uh, we have two traits. The first trait is my mutant brothers and sisters. Once per game, when an effect other than clearing removes an action token from Sabretooth, after resolutions, heal him one click. Now, the example that he gave him was right. taking off an action token from leadership. Yep. Okay. There are definitely other ways to remove action tokens in this game, so that is cool. And I did, con I raised my hand, and we did confirm that my brother, my mutant brothers and sisters, is a shared trait. So, man, it works perfectly well with the Brotherhood of Mutants team ability, which is just Superman enemy. Which is when they roll a ten or higher, they also remove an action token. Yes. So I'm super excited to see how well all that's going to work. And it's setting up really good synergy for the Brotherhood already. Yeah. Uh, we have one special combat symbol that is going to be 
uh, Indom, which is really great because this particular Sabretooth, we haven't had a sculpt that even looked like this for, for a very long time. It was like GSX or GSX. something. Yeah, the one that you couldn't heal once they did damage to you. So that, that was a thing. But to, uh, he has a special speed power on top dial with 10 speed. 12 attack. Man, they're really hitting heavy with these 12 attacks in this set yeah. already. 18 defense uh, with your super senses. I forgot to mention that he's got blade claws and fangs with the, on that top dial. And then he has three naked damage. This second uh, trait that I forgot to mention a minute ago is called feral resilience. When Sabretooth takes damage from an opponent's attack after resolutions, roll a d6. Four and five... Heal Sabretooth one click. If he rolls a six, heal Sabretooth two clicks or remove an action token from him. So, I mean... I hear if he uh, removes an action token, something pretty cool happens. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah, 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 it's yeah. like he heals or something. So, 75 points, I mean, that's that's pretty freaking He's good. Um, the special speed power is Charge Flurry Stealth. So, yeah, for 75 points... Charge Flurry Stealth. He actually looks really similar to an Electra dial to me for some reason. Yeah, I can see that. So, can see that for sure. a really good, probably uncommon figure. There's like, like a lot of characters in this set. I can't remember how many he is, but I'm assuming he's an uncommon. Uh, he's really good, and it, we we really needed a good Sabretooth because of like the last ones that we got, which were in... what. A, I don't even remember which set that was. But it, I remember one of them had the Avengers keyword, and like he was oh, yeah. okay. okay. Yeah, like he was he was, he was okay. But yeah. no, this is a really good one, especially if you're a Sabretooth so, fan. That uncommon Sabretooth is zero twenty three A, but this super rare Professor X is zero thirty five. It's a low low amount of rares. Like saying Professor X is the first super rare. And then the Sabretooth is whatever, the last uncommon. That's like 12, 12 rares or so in the set. I guess that's not bad. But uh, that's saying that those guys are what they are with the um, thing. So Professor X is really complicated, and he's kind of a lot to get into. Uh, he has Illuminati, Shar Shire? That's Shiar. It. Shiar, whatever. X-Men Scientist. Um, he's 100 points. He's really a lot. He's 9 range. He has no special combat symbols. He has the X-Men team ability. He has a full dial of mind control. His stats ramp up. He starts at a 9 attack, ends at a 12. 2 damage, ends at a 4. 17 defense, ends at an 18. Uh, he does get slower, though. Read these two traits. Uh, and whether or not he's better than Dreamer, you know, it's up to you. Dreamer's already amazing, so whatever. <laughs> uh, colossal stamina, but only if a character has an influence token. Power, give another character within range an influence token. Now it's within range, not line of fire. So within his 9 range, just keep, keep that in mind. When Professor X does remove all of his influence tokens, so he can only have one influence token on a person at a time. His second trait is when Professor X uses leadership, characters with an influence token are considered adjacent. When Professor X uses mind control, in cap, pen blast, or outwit, he may target characters with an influence token regardless of line of fire. So, if you want to, with that whole ignoring line of fire, putting on an influence token within range, he can use it to either leadership friendlies or to shoot in mind control opposing characters, which is awesome. His special, sorry, that was his, yeah, those are both traits, sorry. His special attack power, he has his entire dial, is violence will solve nothing, we must try to use our gifts to bring peace to mankind. Incapacitate, but only if a friendly character has been hit this game. So, yeah, they're probably going to get hit sometime in the game. Pen blast, but only if a friendly character has been KO'd this game, by an attack this game, sorry. So if another character dies, you get these things. So it's like, all right, look, I'm going to incapacitate you. Please don't harm us, whatever. And then it's like, all right, you killed one of my students. Boom, headshot, which I love. His damage power is leadership, outwit, and shape change. I think this is a really cool Professor X. He does a lot. You certainly have to play him a very specific way because you want to you know, want to keep him in with that nine range, which is a really hefty range, which ignores everything for Line of Fire for the most part. But he's only five clicks long. He has no damage reducers. All he has to protect him is shape change. Like, you really got to make sure. Taking up a third of your 300-point build, you got to be really careful how you use this Professor X for sure. I'm going to withhold most of my judgment on this. I think he might be a little over-costed, but his stats on the last click are oh, tw good. 12 attack, 18 defense with 4 damage. And with that pin side, and he also gets the shape change, he has...
super senses. So I guess we will see. Uh, and go from there. But uh, there's one more figure that we wanted to talk about that is in the Dark Phoenix Saga, but I think we forgot to mention something uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking about Regenesis, Calder. Yeah, so it's not going to be held like a normal uh, monthly OP kit or a slop, as you will. He said it's going to be on a 2x2 two two map. I assume that actually means like a Battle Royale map and not a like a four-square map. As awesome as that would be, you can barely pit, fit your whole team. So you choose a side at the beginning, and that just chooses prizing. He said you can swap between Cyclops or Wolverine whenever you want. You can just be like, you know what? This month, I want to play with some Cyclops figures, all right? Second, it's going to be 200-point cap. This is their recommended way to run it. You'll get three figures at the beginning, and he says you can trade if you want to. So normally in any sealed, you don't get to trade your figures around. But since there isn't a Wolverine side or a Cyclops side in the OP kit, you might want to have to trade in order to make a theme team. So that's really cool. Uh, you have to record your pulls at the venue because you can use your past figures in future months to build better teams. So what that means is uh, someone might, you know, we have to record just to make sure no one's like, taking extra x-men from home that they bought online or whatever so you have to record the polls every single month you are building your roster as you as play you through along. the months so yeah so that is how x-men or genesis is going to work it's unique they're trying something new um any recommended like style of play i'm always down for so i would like to see just how it goes in the future for sure he kind of left it so the venues can still kind of do what they want and he did explicitly say these these are the recommendations right. um he did say that if you guys the easiest way to uh record your teams is just have your judge take a picture of the teams and then you know attach like a little note to individual pictures or whatever so i i think it actually would be really cool i did specifically ask what happens if oh, you yeah. come in at month two or month three you miss the first month or two he said basically you just start that month and you are building your roster starting that month yeah, he's like yeah well kind of sucks to miss <laughs> like that's kind of like basically what i was like ah, kind of sucks to miss the first month but what are you gonna do about it so back to dark phoenix yeah, back back All to right. Dark Phoenix. Now, uh, this slide when it popped up, there was this like audible cheering oh, yeah. in the room, which was really cool. Actually, it felt like a really good vibe, and that was for two by two Nimrod G 3 It has the keywords Sentinel, Future, and Robot. Three different point totals, 375, 275, or 175. It is a 14-click long dial, 8-range eight, eight, uh, range with two bolts, flying, indom, and colossal damage symbol. Not a special power on the dial, but we have three traits, and it way more than makes up for any kind yeah. of special power. It's, this thing is dumb. I'm just going to let you know. Dumb. First one is called Reconfiguring Weapons System for Maximum Effect. At the beginning of your turn, choose a standard attack power. Nimrod can use that power this turn. All right, you got pick a power. There's that. It's just an attack power, but who cares? It's pretty good. Uh, second trait, running comparative evaluation of reference data. When Nimrod is attacked, this is the one that I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> When Nimrod is attacked and would be would be hit, you may roll a d6. If your roll is equal or higher than the attacker's attack roll, Nimrod evades that attack and after resolutions, deal the attacker damage equal to their printed damage value. So they hit themselves instead. It's awesome. Ugh. And kind of terrifying. I mean, yeah, no, no, that's gross. That's so gross, guys. Ugh. Why would they? Why would they print that? That's so it's... nasty. I love it. It's it's gonna be so dumb. Now, it's not as dumb as something that happened into in a game that oh, happened no. between Calder and I oh, today. Geez. We'll talk about that later. That's a completely different subject. But uh, that's I see, Chris is still salty about I'm it. I'm still like, super salty. All right, so there's your <laughs> there's your foreshadowing. <laughs> All right, the sec or third trait, the third trait, repair protocols activated. Each time Nimrod takes two or more damage from an opponent's attack. By the way, guys, there's a lot of he's beefy, impervious. Oh, he's on beefy. The, by the way, in this third, I'm sorry, 14 click long dial, there are three clicks of invulnerability, 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clicks of impervious and four, three clicks of invincible. He never gets toughness or anything less than invulnerability. It's dumb. So each time Nimrod takes two or more damage from an opponent's attack, give him a structural damage token, backslash, backslash, free, remove a structural damage token to heal one click. What do you what do you think, Calder? My favorite part about this dial isn't the pick a standard power, or whatever, isn't the dealing damage back. I'd say he's got a nineteen printed defense for the last five clicks of his dial. It's so dumb. So for hundred and seventy five points, just look how much life you get. And for every hundred points you only get three more clicks. Why not play this guy at one seventy five? The stats are the exact same for each starting line. That's just an extra three clicks of the same stats and yeah. everything like it's dumb it's just repeated yeah is what it is so 10 12 18 4 is what they are on each one of those different starting lines it does this is the only thing that i feel like they dialed it back just a little oh, bit yeah. and that is phasing, phasing. teleport that is it that's <laughs> okay Whew. he does have uh naked attack base naked attack the whole dial but it is offset by the pickup power uh, he's got invincible on each one of those clicks. That's your three clicks of invincible. And he has four base damage on each one of those clicks with shape change. So, I mean, if you can move in. You could pick Pinsai. Or, I mean, you got energy explosion with two bolts. Right. You got, I mean, the options are there. He can do massive damage. And all the while, this stupid trait where if you just roll higher than your opponent it's like nah no you bro yeah not gonna happen sorry so that's nimrod do you have anything less you want to talk about with nimrod uh, he's an uncommon he's g003 like we said so that means there's probably only going to be two commons in this set and uh i'm not loving what nimrod's going to do to popper tournaments that's just terrifying honestly okay Ugh. Now, the, oh, the next man. thing was the most comprehensive, the most amount of questions asked, yeah. the most amount of everything during this whole fan appreciation. Everyone was like, you know, we were on the same train right yeah. up until this. Like, oh, yeah, X-Men. Yeah, sure. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, and then it was completely derailed, and everyone was like, oh, my God. There was like 20 questions oh, so many. in a row based off that, and I'm, I know this means way more to you. All because of one man. All because of one man. This means way more to you. Take it away. All right. All because of, oh, yeah, the macho man, Randy Savage. Yeah. So we got our first WWE preview. This is honestly all I wanted to see, and they gave us so much more. So they covered a few things. WWE is going to have a team ability, which we'll get into like a lot later. It's going to have special powers. They talked about having a WWE pack. We said this before. So basically what Scott said during the – the presentation, sorry, um, was that there are powers that are more superhero-y. Super strength, stealth. Like, that's not really wrestling powers. Like, yeah, they're all really, really strong, but they're not, like, super strength picking up a truck strong. Sorry, Braun Strowman. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But basically, all those powers turn into circle powers instead of square powers. And then on the card, where the powers are in circles, they have a red ring around them to show you that Smoke Cloud isn't Smoke Cloud. It's Stun. Stealth is Nimble. And what was that? Super Strength is Reversal. So it should be said that he pointed out, and this is definitely one of the like WizKids downstairs mix-ups, is yeah. he pointed out that on these character cards, you will be able to tell that the, it is a WWE power, not a standard power from the regular pack, by the indicated red circle oh, nice. on the powers on the card. And this this Macho Man Randy Savage starts top dial with a circle green power, and on the card, it is not it's highlighted not red. red. And you're oh, like, man. really, guys? You're rolling out your... Really? Yeah, that's uh, a already, already messed it up. But so the Macho Man has New World Art Order, WWE, and celebrity keywords. He has two traits: signature move, flying elbow. It is close. Uh, movement ignores hindering and characters. If Macho Man Randy Savage has one action token, move up to three squares, then make a close attack. If you start adjacent to plus two ropes. And the ropes are basically hindering and blocking terrain, he said. All right. Uh, adjacent to plus two ropes also modify 
uh, plus X, where X is the amount uh, your attack totaled exceeded the hit character's defense. Blah, sorry. So, so it's modifying your damage plus yeah, X. Yeah, mod- modifying your damage plus X. The second one is one of the greatest talkers in WWE history. Perplex, period. When Macho Man uses it to target himself, he may modify a value except damage plus 2 instead of plus 1. When he uses it to target an opposing character, until your next turn, that character can't use Outwit or Perplex, which I really enjoy. By the way, does that feel like a, a yellow lantern power oh, to you? Oh, like, it totally does. It totally does. It feels like it to me. Uh, so he has no range. He has Indomitable. Like we said, he starts with Charge. He has an 18 Super Senses, 3 damage with that special damage power, which was the Perplex, by the way. Sorry if it made it sound like it was a trait. He rolls onto some Flurry with some of that Nimble and uh, uh, Stun and Reversal later in the dial. Reversal's actually up top, sorry. He goes on to Combat Reflexes, later Super Senses. He has Regeneration, which is Snap Into It, which I really appreciate. Then he has Normal <laughs> Perplex uh, for the rest of his dial. I totally missed that. And he's got <laughs> Snap Into it's Slim Jim. Snap Into Slim Jim. Uh, and so he's an eight click long dial now for only 60 points. He's five clicks for a hundred. He gets an extra three with charge instead of just flurry top dial. And honestly, there's a lot of really good flavor text. Uh, there's so many, there's going to be so many people yelling at your table in your local venue. They're going to be like, Oh yeah. Like, Oh, skate move method of madness. You know, like it's going to be, it's going to be so wild. People are going to be doing their stone cold impressions. It's going to be crazy. So Chris, what does Nimble do? What are all these powers we're learning about in this new WWE set? Yeah, can we first talk about how you have to learn all new powers? Oh, basically? yeah. Like, they're, so, the, they're the same colors. Yeah. It's just all new powers. So, it's it's a little weird, right? Because we're not changing all the powers, just, like, a couple of them. Yeah. So, you don't have to totally relearn a brand new pack. You'll need to buy a new pack. But, uh... But yeah, so it's like 50% of the powers? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if it's going to be that many. Probably not. But I will say they're absolutely super flavorful. Oh, yeah. They're really cool. I like how they work. But also, it's just going to be another thing where you, it, maybe, possibly, somebody will look at it and be like, oh, that's that's going to be super strength. No, that's not super strength. That's actually going to be nimble. Okay? Right, and right. you're going to think that it's going to have something to do with attack. But not really. Because if you go to the WWE pack this is what nimble is listed as um i'm sorry let's see nimble is the stealth one right or the black circle um see we're already confused yeah so uh, black circle what would be stealth uh, is actually going to be ignores hindering terrain for movement purposes breakaway plus two and then free action move up to one square so it's like what you wish leap and climb was but it's not. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And now we go into Reversal, which is the uh, substitute for Super Strength. Yes. All right. Uh, adjacent opposing characters have Breakaway minus two, three this turn. If this character has been given no actions or only move actions, make a close attack targeting a character that missed this character or failed to break away from this character since your last turn. That's a great uh, flavor for reversal. I really like it. I think it totally works. It, it's kind of like a weird mixture between plasticity with the yeah. with the breakaway minusing. Um, it does make sense because reversal, you're like latching onto somebody, right. and then you get this free action. Uh, it, it's kind of weird. I like it. It definitely makes sense. Um, I don't know. I would. Anything else you want to add about that before you move on to, I think, Stun? Stun! Stun! Yeah, stone Cold Stunner! All right, so Stun, which I believe is the stand-in for like Smoke, smoke Cloud. Cloud. Yeah. All right, so Stun says, and I, I actually, out of the three that they previewed, all three of these were on Macho Man Randy Savage, which yes. I think that's why they previewed these three. I There's definitely going to be more. and oh, sure. And yeah. other ones on other characters. But Stun says, when you hit one plus characters a hit character modifies and at- modifies attack and damage by negative one until your next turn that's totally flavorful i like that. Yep. that that's actually a really cool power that that one's not confusing um some of these like maybe reversal is, there's a lot of there's a lot more words there it could be more confusing but that one's not really just pop you get them minus one attack minus one damage until next turn right on so now there are additional abilities for the WWE. So we talked about the WWE having a team ability. 
So here's a few things that that's going to grant. The WWE team ability gives them bounce, pin, WWE rules, grand entrance, and it's going to be uncopy oh shoot Sorry. we we Look should we that. should talk about I okay the, I, I was forward this is why Sorry. this is confusing and you'll totally understand multiverse rules multiverse rules this is going to get crazy and try to bear with us I'll, this is where everyone had a bunch of questions and pick a power questions and everyone was trying to figure out what was going on so if you are playing with only wwe figures pieces equipment if there are any you got the 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 ring that's coming out right if you are playing with literally only wwe things you will have wwe team ability will just give you bounce and pin so we'll start with that and then we'll transfer over into multiverse rules right. once you get that because basically what it happens is the wwe team ability actually changes when you bring in literally anything else other than WWE stuff. One, he said, one piece of equipment, one character, anything like that, you change the rules from just WWE to multiverse. So just the WWE team ability, bounce and pin, go. All right. So bounce. This character treats printed hindering and printed blocking as ropes. You can bounce enemies off them and fully use flying leap if adjacent to plus two of them. So that must sound so weird. That's going to sound like us talking about mana and lands and whatever for magic because we don't know what flying leap is or plus two. So I assume that means you're adjacent to both two pieces of printed hindering and blocking. Pin. Now, the last three clicks of Macho Man's dial had orange click numbers, and no one noticed this. And he's like, you guys want to take a second look? And everybody's like... Oh, so here's what Pin does. This is super flavorful. Free, choose an adjacent opposing character that's on an orange click number. And that this character hit with their signature move this turn. So if you hit them with your signature move and they're on an orange click number, you both roll a d6. And if your result is higher, deal that character one penetrating damage. And repeat this process. If your opponent rolls a six, which would be a kick out, that character heals one, heals one click. So if you keep getting a higher number a higher number you can pin that character and i honestly i i kind of giggled a little bit i was fanboying out that made so much sense and it was so cool and flavorful i was like just so happy that they made like a pin mechanic really work in this game so this is how it would work like in practice in just right WWE. all right so basically i i activate the free action uh my adjacent opposing character that's on an orange click number and this character i like i hit him with my signature move they're now on an orange click number. I go for the pin. I activate the activate the free action. We roll a d6. Say Calder rolls a four. I roll a five. They take one penetrating damage. We go again. Yep. We roll again. I rolled a five. He rolled a four. Take one more damage. And you just keep going until I guess so someone just dies. Until just they KO. die. Yeah. But if you roll a six, you kick out. You heal one click. All right. So I, it's, there's some people out there that are going to be like, oh, my God. This is so broken. Okay. Remember, this is only inside of WWE rules. Yep. Okay? There's not orange click numbers on your regular hero click, so remember yeah. that. That's never going to come up against anything else, like if you're fighting Superman, so just WWE clicks. Yeah, Macho Man will sadly not be able to, like, pin Superman. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that would be. that's not going to happen, so there's that. Um, but that that's the WWE team ability when you are inside of that. Now, we'll, we'll switch over and... We're going to talk about multiverse rules. There was an entire slide that basically changed how the WWE team ability works, and here's how that kind of works now. So the WWE team ability, when you are playing with multiverse rules, states this. Bounce and pin, that's the same. WWE rules, which introduces the new rule book to this character when you are playing against like Superman or whatever, and this ability called Grand entrance, which is awesome. awesome. It's so good. And then also it makes the team ability uncopyable. So if there are any team abilities that allow you to copy it when you're just playing WWE, that's fine. When you switch over to anything else, it's not okay. You cannot copy it any longer. WWE rules, go. Okay, so this character cannot be the target of ranged attacks or outwit. 
if they're on, click number one. So you're not going to be shooting my macho man all the way from over there. You got to get in close, buddy. You got to deal me damage first. Now, uh, uh, or they've already been targeted by a ranged combat attack this turn. So you can't shoot them twice, which is really cool. It also has protected pulse wave, which is awesome. So you can't just running shot pulse wave them to try to negate this part of the rules. Grand Entrance is during your first turn. If this character is in your starting area, they have free move. So it's like the music starts playing. You're... Dun, 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 and you just dun. run in. Then John Cena's like, yeah, and he goes to the ring and he like slides under the ropes. Like, that's exactly what this is. It's super flavorful. It's the Grand Entrance music. They stroll on into the ring, and then you fight. So that's so, really awesome. So yes, they get a free move, top dial. They can move up to their like eight, nine, whatever number of squares. Right. They're also immune to ranged attacks and outwit because they're going to be on click number one. And then also there was something that... Um, I, I think we, we missed on oh, and it says this character can't be the target of range attacks or or, or outwit if they're on click number one, they're on a click with oh, an orange, orange click, click number. number. So it actually kind of makes them immune again at the end of their dials, yep. which is interesting. So top dial, they're out they're immune to this stuff. On the orange click numbers they're immune to this stuff. Or they've already been attacked by a ranged attack. So already been targeted, targeted. by a ranged attack this turn yeah so remember that it's it's not hit it's not been dealt damage just targeted so you you're like okay they're in the middle of their dial i'm gonna attack them uh and then i i just blanket miss like i roll right. double ones or whatever now they can't be targeted again it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be so great and the best part is that this is all gonna be so much new stuff i think we're gonna see a lot of wwe in the meta like i'm really excited to see like the 300 point modern thing just all of a sudden become it's going to be just wrestlers and which wrestler has like whatever like macho man's really good do i know he's gonna be meta you know we're gonna have to see we're gonna have to see all right so as mentioned some of the questions that were asked i'm going to try to remember oh, those right. off the top of my head because they might be the same questions that you have um one that i remember is what well, the guy was like how are we going to buy these? Is there a rarity? No, there is not a rarity. They are all in transparent packaging. We've mentioned that before on the show. They're in transparent packaging, and you will need to you will be able to see what you are buying before you buy it. Also, we found out that your individual shops will have to order these individually. Yeah. Okay, so you will not get a box that's like, oh, this definitely comes with four Stone Cold Steve Austins, four uh, Rick, F not Rick Flair. Or just one of everybody. Like, yeah, like yeah. One or four or whatever, you, everyone. You'll basically have to put in an order. That's my For understanding. Each individual character. So you'll be like, okay, we, we want six of this one. We want four of this one. We want, you know, so it's going to come down to kind of you guys talking to your, your venues. Uh, whoever's ordering the stuff at your venue and just be like, hey, if, if they don't know, and Calder and I were talking in the car ad nauseum about this, if your venue does not know anything about WWE, then they may not know who popular characters are. And if they don't know who the popular characters are, then they're not going to know who to order unless you tell them like, hey – you should probably order a bunch of Stone Cold Steve Austin and maybe not so many of uh, Roman Reigns. Or oh, sorry, like just in case you like Roman Reigns. Okay, I mean anyone else. <laughs> uh, so so next that, topic. that's a thing. Make sure that they know what they probably should be ordering for the venue. Do you remember any other questions that people were asking? Oh, pick a power stuff. Oh, pick a power. So someone had a really good point. Um, if you want to pick a power with a normal character like a Marvel or DC, let's say Jakeem Thunder, can I pick a WWE power? They say yes if you have a WWE character on your force. Here's why. It unlocks the ability for you to use that pack. You already need a pack for literally any Marvel or DC character, right? You need a standard powers and abilities card. You need a specific pack for WWE. So as long as you have any WWE character on your force, and honestly, whoever the cheapest one is, is probably going to be played a lot. Well, just for picket power purposes. I don't I mean, think it's just your force either. I think that... Oh, on the so, board? So you will have access to your pack, of course, but say your opponent brings a Macho Man Randy Savage and you have a picket power character... Just because they brought Macho Man, it unlocks your ability to pick powers off of the WWE pack as well. That was my understanding. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. 
it was super convoluted and everybody was everybody kind of had an opinion everyone was like uh will it work this way that way and he's like okay that's a bit heavier of a power we were uh, or whatever of a question yeah. that we thought was going to happen right now what happened was you had a bunch of people that have meta competitive minds going 100%. while they are releasing all this information and i don't think that they anticipated it so there were all these questions specifically about like how can we break this figure? How can we like what? Not specifically Macho Man. At the end like, of the day, like, that's all that matters. Chris. Yeah, they're that's like all that matters. They're like, how are we going to use this with this and things like that? And he just wasn't ready for those questions. So yeah. it was a lot of like, like holding back what the answers to those were. And I don't know if we really know what's going to happen, but. Yeah, we're both pretty sure that the WWE is definitely going to be impacting the meta, even with the limited amount of information that we got, based off of anytime something new is introduced into the game, people try to break it. For sure. And you know what? Meta or not, WWE, I'm excited. Like, I'm already on the hype train. As soon as I saw that logo, they didn't even have to show me Macho Man. I was like, I'm already there, guys. I'll meet you at the station. I'm here. Like, I'm I'm so ready just to own WWE Hero Clicks already. I just, ah, uh, clock is ticking, man. I'm waiting. And I'm impatient. At least we know that the ring that comes in the starter set is definitely oh, yeah. going to have totally different. rules. Yep specifically to that ring it is not going to have the same rules as the boxing ring and i don't think that they're going to errata the boxing ring to act like the ropes that we talked about with the hindering and blocking yeah correct yeah it's it's still its own thing and if you brought the boxing ring instead of the wwe ring then that would unlock multiverse rules so remember that it's yep. it's any game element that you bring and I, I'm sorry, I don't mean that as the actual definition in this game as game element. I mean, oh, yeah. anything that you bring from the other universes into this will unlock multiverse rules. Let's take it outside the ring. Let's go to, uh, to a galaxy far, far... Oh, no, wait, that's the wrong one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the final frontier, as they say. We got a few slides. This may make a few listeners out there pretty happy for Star Trek... Heroclix away team, the next generation to boldly go, which is going to be released in September of 2019. We got, um, you know, quite honestly, Calder and I are not very versed in 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 this in this world. So, all right, we got uh, left to right. We got beard guy with a phaser. (laughs) We got data. Data. I know that Uh, one. We got pale guy with an iPad. Woo! He's killing it. Uh, We got the reading rainbow guy with a phaser or uh, something else. we got uh, Becky Lynch crossing her arms wearing a blue dress or uh, something. And then we got Professor Xavier. Oh, no, he's, his legs work. And he's got a phaser, too. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay, Woo! so Jordy, Jordy's in Whatever. there. Uh, Picard is in there. Data. And honestly, I can't remember probably any of the other ones. But here's what you might want to know if you are uh, a Star Trek fan. Mirror Universe is now Mirror a Mirror Universe. I don't know anything about Star Trek, but I'm already ready for this Mirror Universe. Everybody's, they're too cool for sleeves in the Mirror Universe. They're chopping them sleeves off, baby. Oh, man, look at this. The, so, Jordy LaForge, the uh, Reading Rainbow guy, he's got a big old gun, and he's shooting it at you. Oh, it looks so awesome. He's actually wearing sleeves. I'm actually really disappointed. He's, he's the only one. <laughs> only one with sleeves on. What are you doing? <laughs> Even the pale dude was like, I'm not only going to wear no sleeves. My arms are going to be missing. I'm going to have robot parts on and a knife. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's bring it. Oh, man. Look at Professor Xavier. Look how swole he got for this. He, this he so got, not only did he get swole, he also magically grew facial hair. Yeah. It made him look like uh, like a, a knockoff Gandalf, kind of. Oh, uh, dude, totally. I'm ready for the Mirror Universe. I'm stoked. So uh, that that's the coolest part right there. So hopefully that made somebody happy. Universe uh, Star Trek. Moving on. Uh, this is a thing that literally, <laughs> this is the, I don't know if this is the most embarrassing part or the coolest part. It's probably the coolest part for Calder, embarrassing for everyone else in the room. We got announced for February 2020, and the only person in the entire room that made any noise, which was Calder, he was like, yeah! It was, was so hard not to keep it to myself. The announcement of Captain America the Avenger and the Avengers, the complete collection set. 
Why do you gotta say it like that, Chris? You mean Captain America and the Avengers! The complete collection set. Like, come on, dude, we're getting a Captain America set in 2020, February 2020. It will have been nine years, nine whole years from the last time we got a Captain America set, a real booster set ladies and gentlemen we oh. we got two slides for these seven figures total i'm gonna let you talk about the first slide because i think you'll care more about it and i'll get the second one i love that the background for this first slide is like an american flag it's just like generic <laughs> google stock image of an american flag it's awesome it's so great so we got a really good elijah bradley um truth version of captain america we haven't gotten him since secret invasion i mean like that's been like 20 years it's been forever yeah. like whatever that is and he was like okay for 49 points the other two i'm excited and i'm slightly disappointed we got another peggy carter using the same peggy carter shield recruit sculpt from nick fury and the agents of shield we got an old man captain america reusing the steve rogers uh sculpt from uh nick fury agents of shield uh and those are the first three real patriotic characters we got to see in the slide I'm going to say that I'm happy for you. Oh, I'm so excited. But everyone else, especially was, online, uh, everyone's like, do we really need another Captain America set? Now, Calder and I went back and forth, and we, I think we met somewhere in the middle. I'm going to let him say why he thinks we do, and then I, I'll, I'll meet him somewhere. So there are so many Captain America characters that are not only just specific to Cap storylines himself, but also to the Marvel Universe that haven't existed yet. Like, we don't have a Captain America as Nomad. Like, that was a really big part in comics, and we doesn't exist. We don't have a Captain America as the Captain unless he's holding Mjolnir. And for, like, 90% of the time he was the Captain, he wasn't holding Mjolnir. So I really want to see that. Besides that... Jack Monroe only exists as super edgy biker man shotgun nomad and doesn't exist as, you know, Jack Monroe as Bucky or the other crazy guy that changed his name to Steve Rogers as Captain America, like the 1950s, you know, commie smasher. I would love to see that stuff. We also don't have a sidekick nomad, Jack Monroe, when he was just wearing the normal nomad costume. We're still missing Free Spirit, who is um, Jack Flags, pretty much. Not girlfriend, but they were the two that teamed up when Jack Flagg was introduced in comics. So we're missing a lot of Captain America supporting cast and crew. This is another great way to do the Serpent Society, since he fought them pretty much every other week in comic books. We're missing a ton of the Serpent Society. And I feel like if they did this set right, it's going to be really heavy on the Captain America characters and lore and all this stuff that we still need that I personally think is lacking. We also don't have, I know it's like, and also, and also, like Calder. Blah. No one knows who these people are. Well, I know, and I care. We're missing the Captain America core, or at least like 50% of the members. So we still don't have, well, we have World War II Captain America and all this stuff, but we're missing American Dream and General America, and then a few others. And we still haven't gotten a John Walker in four years. We haven't gotten a Bucky as Captain America since, what, Fear Itself, right? Like, yeah, Bucky think, is yeah, Cap? Yeah, yeah. Like, so it's been a long time since characters that will probably be in this set will be made. They're like, oh, another Peggy Carter. We haven't got her since Nick Fury either. So that's been, it's going to be five years when the set comes out. So really, don't be all groaning and moaning because this set is should, if WizKids does it right, should have a lot of new characters and a lot of characters that haven't been made in a really long time. All right, so we, we were thinking about it, and we came to a probably a hot take that in the game of Heroclix, on the Marvel side specifically, there's just about three titles that are going to carry sales for Marvel. Obviously, Avengers. Yeah. That's why, yeah. I mean, Black Panther and the Avengers and the Illuminati or whatever. Yeah. Like You have to put Avengers in the title. That's going to carry stuff. X-Men, anything. And then Spider-Man. For sure. So we are getting a bunch of Avengers recently. That is absolutely true. There's a lot of people that are complaining about this. And this is going to be another Avengers set. But what else would you get? That was that was what I came to the conclusion. What else would you get? If you didn't get the Avengers, you're going to get one of those other two mentioned things. This is an Avengers set, and yes, it's going to be, I mean, they just made this Black Panther and the Avengers, but most of it was Avengers, and yes, there was like a pretty heavy sub-theme of Wakanda. Uh, cosmic, 
was way too huge in this Black Panther set. But Honestly. it it was but more Wakanda like was good. it it wasn't really focused on Wakanda. It was focused right. on the other stuff in the set more so. Um, especially by the way, if you played Battle Royales and Seal, trust me, you were trying to pull the other stuff and nothing to do with Black Panther, more or less. Yeah. Um, We'll get into that later, but what else are you going to pick? You're going to get like really weird. You can get sub themes and stuff, but what else is going to carry sales? And that's pretty much what we came to is it's always going to be Avengers, X-Men, or Spider-Man. Past that, nothing else is going to sell. Now, if they made a Captain America set and it was everything I wanted, you guys would – well, I don't want to say you guys – but the majority of people would all complain because they're like, what's up with all these red, white, and blue nerds? Like, who are half these people? Same thing with Black Panther. I would have kind of complained because I'm like, I don't know anything about Black Panther lore. So I was really happy they had a couple of Avengers, Iron Man, Namor, like whoever, to make me understand why I wanted to buy the set in the first place. So either way, there's going to be things people don't want. Like, no one wanted Earth X, but there was still Spider-Man there for you. So I totally understand what's going to happen with the sets. But the selling point is almost always going to be for marvel you know avengers x-men spider-man sure okay so moving on to uh this is going to be slide number two this is not captain america related but we still have a captain in there and that is captain marvel uh we are missing a mohawk which i'm upset about why won't they give me a good mohawk one whatever it's not really important but there are i'm starting off with a less cool because we keep getting some of this stuff there is another hulk um we but this is going to be the immortal hulk and we don't have that version of this one yet and then these last two are two that i think some people are genuinely going to be happy while one is definitely a character we've seen a billion times you certainly do not have this version because they've never made this version and that is spider-man but it's spider-man specifically from out of nowhere the ps4 costume yeah like we're like wait that's spider-man and he has the white spider-man logo and all these other like white accents you're like that's ps4 spider-man what in the world like wow very interesting i don't know if they can do anything as far as like a keyword with that that will make it any different or stand out in any way he's definitely not going to have the avengers keyword if they're playing to the actual game if they add it then they really shouldn't have just the same way but they they do that stuff all the time because if you noticed the animated xavier had the illuminati keyword that guy never came yeah, near joining true. the Illuminati, so I don't know what they were doing there. They just throw these things around randomly. So you played Spider-Man. I didn't. Yes. Do you think there's a specific ability they could give him that can separate him potentially from other comic book spider man That particular Spider-Man, or the game itself, he was very heavy and reliant on gadgets so he had like an electro web he could shoot and it stunned people he had spider bots that he popped out and they could go and do their own thing they could shoot enemies and things like that so uh, very heavy on like there was like impact webbing there was all kinds of weird little gadgets that you could do and the thing was you could technically play the game without using any of these gadgets but trust me you're gonna die a lot more (laughs) so you had to get like really really good with using the gadgets so my guess is if they're kind of playing to how they should it'll be really heavy on like what you would expect out of like a green arrow with like an entire quill full of like trick arrows Mm, that's what this spider-man should be if they're doing it right uh the last figure is going to be taskmaster but it is a it is definitely a costume we have never had. I remember reading this run, and by run I mean it was a mini series, four issues long, from two thousand and two. And you will never get another one of these again. So if you like Taskmaster, you want a different costume, this is definitely going to be in your wheelhouse. He has a cool little like hollow shield or thing that he's got going on, and a sword. And like he does Taskmaster things. I don't know how he's gonna be any better than the Taskmaster that they just came out with in Black Panther, but I really like Taskmaster. I think he's a good character, so... I feel like he's easy to make, right? Like, give him some pseudo pick a power, give him charge, running shot, like, whatever. It's like, okay, that's a Taskmaster dial. We're pretty much done for the day. I'd say that's about it. So, I lost it. I fanboyed really hard over Captain America, because, you know, as you do. And then they showed a slide where I was like, mm, that's pretty neat, and that's honestly it. But the rest of the crowd, and I assume the rest of the Heroclix community, is going to be a little more excited than I am, Chris. 
This is the one that I was actually joining in and kind of yeah. cheering for. And it caught, caught her the only one for Captain America. Like, literally the only one in the room. It's so not cool. And, uh. and everyone else, when they showed this slide, April 2020, Justice League Unlimited, which we knew they could 100% carry an entire set based off of the, the DC animated universe. We only got a handful of them uh, the, from the Justice League, specifically with that keyword, in the Batman animated set. And everyone, well, pretty much everyone, loved the Batman animated set. It was a fantastic set, but we only got like six keyworded Justice League characters, and, and they were great. I mean, they were really good um, that we got them. They were not as powerful as some of them, what we wanted them to be, but at least we got them that batman with the justice league keyword i use today is dumb yeah. he's like so good but then we just got this batmobile as a con exclusive which is awesome and then we're like oh my god justice league unlimited 2020 everyone lost their minds and then they started <laughs> they started going through the slides of what we could, what we're expecting to see in the justice league and while i was initially like oh my god yes then my hope started dropping like real quick. So, it, don't you like Superman and Batman, Chris? Oh yeah, I thought you liked Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman. She's awesome. She's great. And and John Stewart. And John Stewart. And I mean, I like them all too. But those are the ones we already had made. The ones we already got. Yeah, they, they, like what they showed as their previews were what we already had made with a couple of exceptions. And a lot of people were genuinely excited about this. I will agree. Now we did not get a Shaira by herself. We got her on a duo click, which was a, Oh, is that her name? Yeah. Well, (laughs) well, don't get me started. We we were, we were told explicitly not to talk about this by Jalen on the podcast. Don't talk about her name. I was getting salty because there's like 43 different names for hot girl, but whatever. Okay, so Shaira is on the duo click with Carter, the Hawkman, uh, which was a fan made or a player made duo click. Now, we are going to get a Shaira by herself, so that's cool, but we're also going to get, finally, a Martian Manhunter. Which that was what everyone was kind of really excited about because I was like, I love Martian Manhunter, and everyone was complaining how we did not get one in the last set. So now we are going to get one. We are also going to get a Batman that is very specifically from an episode that I had to show Calder this episode because he did he he's not seen too many episodes of the series and there's a lot of people like myself that I kind of grew up on this and I loved it and I've seen every episode like a number of times like you got to see this so you can pull this up on YouTube uh there is a figure made with Batman with a microphone in his hand and that is an episode where the I I can't remember her name is it the Enchantress Enchantress yeah turns her. Diana into a literal pig and she's running around and Batman has to do something for the Enchantress in order to trade, like make a deal with her in order to trade, to make Diana go back to revert back to her actual form instead of being a pig. So he had to karaoke. I know that sounds super stupid. So dumb. So it kind of was, but it's also awesome. We're getting a Batman karaoke. That's something we'll definitely never get again. But how does that work? So, like in Hero Clicks form, <clears throat> it's Batman with a microphone. What what does he what does he do? Incapacitate the whole like crowd? Like he's gonna be probably like a rare, a prime even, like this special little Batman. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's got one of these has got to be a prime. Here's why: because at the exact same, they show two Batman sculpts, and in one of them where he's just standing oh, yeah. there, one oh. is a batarang in his hand, and the other one is a microphone in his hand. One is definitely a prime. It, it's got to be. So I don't know what he's going to do. Like, captivate the audience. I don't know. But, like, in the episode is is Zatanna and the Enchantress that are, like, standing there crying. They're like, it's so beautiful. (laughs) As he's singing. So dumb. But Enchantress held up her end of the bargain and turned Wonder Woman back into uh, Wonder Woman instead of being a pig. So that's... That's the, there's that. Uh, we got a sculpt for Amazo. We got a sculpt for some scientist chick whose name I can't remember. Um, and then we got into some stuff that's actually really, really cool. We were speculating that one of these days, this was maybe like a year ago or maybe a little bit longer, 
chase theme might be possibly the Justice Lords. Okay, well, we're definitely getting the Justice Lords, but we don't think that they're going to be the chase theme, and we'll explain that in a second. So hopefully they'll be distributed throughout the rarities. There are only six of them. So it wouldn't fill out a whole chase theme anyway with what they're doing with chases. It would fill out a Marvel chase theme. Yes. Which is like a standard six character chase theme. But DC in their animated sets, they like to have that little, that beefy extra chase theme, you know? This is correct. And if you remember going back to whatever set that was, I don't remember. Batman the Animated Series? Was it really? I don't know. The, uh... Super Friends chases. Yes, that was Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, Chris. thanks. I paid attention to the rest of the set and not the chases very much, but we got... You know, that's the opposite for most people. Mm, yeah, yeah. Th- this is true. Uh, so, we got how many of the total... We, we wrote this out earlier, but so, I can't, can't remember sure, what it ended up being. Sure. Not counting the honorary members, there are 22 members of the Super Friends. Yes, so we got 12 of them in the first set and we can totally fill out another chase theme with just super friends uh it was confirmed by scott that they are bringing back the trouble alert trait we're pretty sure that they're going to be the chases and we did get a sculpt of the samurai which is one of the super friends that is the only one that we got a sculpt for as a super friend but we also got some members of the legion of doom now from the superman universe including so we got brainiac and black manta black Manta's doing this really cool flutter kick thing with some water holding him up and he also has a little uh, little gun there uh brainiac in his little short shorts which is hilarious by the way is that like a superman animated brainiac kind of style i i think that's super friends that's you su- okay so this is super friends brainiac now People were wondering, hey, is the Legion of Doom going to be trouble alerts? And he says, uh, you know, they'll they'll cause trouble. And, and to me, I'm like, oh, come on, man. I, I so badly want them to be trouble alerts. You have no idea. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, the, the they'll cause trouble was kind of hilarious. It was, it was a great little answer. I'm like, all right, I can accept that. Sure, sure. But I'm excited to see, um, especially to play a full Legion of Doom versus a full Super Friends roster. It will be super fun. Today, and we are going to go into this more on the next episode because we're already uh, running probably longer than we thought we were going to run. Um, But the Justice League Unlimited trait, I think, is that what it's called, on the last ones that were made in the Batman? Yes. Okay, the Batman animated series. Because I got to play that today, I saw just how cool it was, and I'm really hoping that they bring that particular trait back i think it'll be really really great if they do that um they are doing a pretty decent job of re bringing back traits like for example in the ba- in the black panther set they did bring back the justice like lightning oh, yes. shared trait just for uh miss marvel mm-hmm. which was cool and uh yeah so i'm i'm hoping it won't be too much of a stretch if they bring that back and it's a really good trait and i got that to proc like all over the place today it was really good so yeah i mean whiz kids future and hero clicks for me is looking really bright we didn't talk about any of the non-hero click stuff like wwe and dice masters the unpainted <laughs> my little ponies and transformers and all that fun stuff and the portal 2 miniatures that are going to happen if you're interested in that awesome there's going to be a lot of information on that elsewhere but for just hero clicks i know i am giddy with excitement on a captain america set i cannot wait to buy a whole bunch of wwe i can't wait to play in x-men or genesis and i can't wait to see them sweet sleeveless mirror bro mirror bros i'm gonna call my mirror bros mirror bros my mirror bros from the star trek the next generation so i'm 100 percent pumped i'm so easy to get on the high train it may feel like but like i'm really really excited for this coming year All right, guys. Well, that is all the news that we're going to talk about now. Remember, this is part one. Part two is going to be coming out tomorrow. You probably will get both of them back to back. uh, And we hope that you enjoyed tonight's episode. If you did and you got some entertainment out of it, make sure you jump on our Patreon uh, that we can get your heroic titles. And we always use those heroic titles in the community section, which we will jump on to next part. 
Um, you can follow us, which we got a bunch of new followers because of Origins and talking to the community and stuff. Uh, you follow us at Dial H for Hero Clicks. That is the number four. You can search us out on Facebook, and we are just a few likes away from reaching 800. Only three likes away. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your mom. Only three likes to 800. All right, we we really would like that. Uh, you can send us an email to Dial H for Hero Clicks at Gmail. Dot com. We got a really cool update on tomorrow's home base initiative. We got some birthdays. We got all kinds of cool stuff. So thank you guys for tuning in, and we will talk to you later. And as a reminder, this episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. Hey, do you think that when we play WWE, you will remember, um... I'm not scared, let's do it. You better choke me out, Alex, please. It only takes like 20 seconds.